Hi, and welcome to a Vaxbarn video about vibrating L-shaped membranes in MATLAB. If you've seen the last few videos we did, you'll be aware that we have a working Art and Titan graphic supercomputer in the collection from 1987. When we started doing our research into this machine, one of the sources of information we found online was a couple of blog articles by Cleve Moeller. Cleve is the inventor of MATLAB and one of the co-founders of the MATWORKS company that publishes MATLAB. Now, in his blog, Cleve describes how between founding the MathWorks and actually joining that company as an employee, he worked first at Intel and then at Arden Computer. And Arden's goal was to create a personal supercomputer that scored better on the price performance metric by an order of magnitude. As shown in this marketing post, you can see in Cleve's first blog post about Ardent. Where this first blog post deals mostly with the history of the company and the machine, the second post deals, deals mainly with the relationship between Ardent and the MathWorks. It describes how the graphics capabilities of MATLAB were pretty basic back in 1988, but that by linking MATLAB against Doré graphics library on the Ardent, they could generate graphics that would only be available in a mainstream version of MATLAB in version 4, which was released in 1992. And then there's this rendering of a vibrating L-shaped membrane in the blog. This L-shaped membrane was the main example used in Cleve's doctoral thesis at Stanford on the use of finite difference methods for the eigenvalues of Laplace equations in two-dimensional domains. If that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry. Simply put, Cleve worked on methods that can be used, among other things, to analyze how things vibrate. The L-shaped membrane, consisting of three squares, is a very simple form, but the mathematics required to predict how such a membrane would vibrate are quite complex. In fact, Cleve grew so fond of this shape that a graph of the first eigenfunction of the membrane ended up being used as the MathWorks company logo. Now, given that the collection has a working Titan and that we have the Titan-specific version of MATLAB installed on the machine, as well as the Doré graphics libraries and the link between those two, and given the fondness with which Cleve recalls seeing the membrane vibrate for the first time on a computer screen in a darkened office at Ardent in 1988, I decided to contact him. So I sent him an email and he immediately became enthusiastic. He set me up with a copy of MATLAB for my PC and sent me the code he used to recreate the vibrating membrane as he recalls it. And with that, I set to work. So, looking at the MATLAB code for the current version of MATLAB that Cleve sent me, there's quite a bit of code that just used to define how the graph is rendered, like the position and the color of light. The vibrating membrane itself is created by taking the first six eigenfunctions of the membrane, which you see here, and to make each of those vibrate by scaling them and multiplying them with a sine or cosine wave, each at a different frequency. When you then add them together, you get the intricate vibrating membrane movement seen in Cleve's blog. So here you see the use of the membrane function to calculate the six eigenfunctions and scale them. And if we scroll down a bit, here you see the multiplication with sine and cosine functions to create the vibrating effect. So, if we run this code in MATLAB, we get the same thing we saw on Cleve's blog. So, I think it's time to fire up the Titan and see if we can recreate this in the original version of MATLAB. So, now that the Titan has booted, the first thing we do is start a program called Dormat. This is the Doré MATLAB graphics server. Now, as you see, it starts out by spitting out messages that no one is talking to it yet, but that's something that we can just ignore for now. We'll start MATLAB in the other window, and MATLAB creates a graphics window which we need to drag to where we want it on the screen. And then you get the MATLAB copyright info. Let's run one of the built-in demos first, as that shows how MATLAB on the Titan was different from any other version of MATLAB at the time. So let's pick the pretty 3D mesh surfaces demo. And 
and now we can see how MATLAB draws this 3D mesh surface plot. Now these were the only 3D graphics capabilities that MATLAB had on any other platform but the Ardent. So let's take a look at the Ardent specific render function. Now this wakes up the doormat background progress and causes it to show its window which draws this very colorful version of the mesh plot. I'll rearrange the windows a bit and the Ardent has a knob box with eight rotating dials and we can use these to rotate, translate or to zoom in on the graph and this is all done in hardware requiring very little of the CPU. Alright, so now that we've played with that a bit, let's get back to the L-shaped membrane. First, we have some modern MATLAB syntax that isn't valid in MATLAB 3.5. For instance, as you can see, using curly braces, as in L curly brace 1 to L curly brace 6, isn't supported. So what we'll do instead is we'll just name these arrays L1 to L6 without using braces. What is nice to see is that the membrane function plots the result after each term of the sum has been added. So you see how the result gets more refined at each step. In particular, you can see how the edges straighten out. So the last argument to the membrane function is the number of terms in the sum and this determines how often this graph needs to be redrawn before the membrane function is done. Another bit of syntax that isn't supported is the assignment of not a number to a whole array at the same time. Instead we'll have to assign it one point at a time. Now with these two limitations in mind let's create a MATLAB 3.5 compatible version of the Dore Wave program. This follows the modern MATLAB version but it drops the whole use of curly braces, it assigns not a number to the flat area of the membrane one point at a time, and it uses the ardent specific render function. What I've also done is I've decreased the dimensions of the graph to 20 by 20 rather than 50 by 50 to speed things up a little bit during development. So let's see what the result looks like. I'll speed things up a little bit through the execution of all the membrane functions. Otherwise this would become a very long video. And here we see the result. Now it is a vibrating membrane, but it doesn't look really like the one we're after. In fact, this one looks a lot like the third eigenfunction multiplied by a sine wave. It's as though this third eigenfunction has way too much of a weight in the end result. So I'm going to compare the first and the third eigenfunctions. And in particularly, I want to find out what the maximum absolute value in each of those two is.
And there it is. There is a six order of magnitude difference between these two eigenfunctions maximum values. And as it turns out, in modern MATLAB, the membrane function normalizes the result to a maximum value of 1 at the end of the calculations. And the older version of membrane simply doesn't do that. So we'll have to modify our program a little bit to add this normalization. And now that we've done that, we can have another look at it. And there it is. Now the result looks a lot like what we saw in Cleve's blog. The colors are off, as I made a mistake there, but otherwise it looks good. Of course, now we'll want to run at a higher resolution to get rid of those edge artifacts. Now that the program works as it should, I think this would be a good time to turn our program into a more flexible function. So I'm going to edit it again and turn it into a function that lets the user provide arguments for the dimensions of the graph, the number of terms in the sum and the partial sum, the time step and the total time. And I'm also going to provide sensible defaults for each. Now let's create a movie with dimension 50 which results in a 101 by 101 matrix for a very smooth image. Now, it's a little slow, which isn't surprising with these large dimensions. But if we speed it up a bit, we can try to compare it with the version we found in Cleve's blog. And there it is, the original vibrating L-shaped membrane, as first witnessed in a darkened office back in 1988, recreated on the original hardware using the original software. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to learn more about the Ardent, please watch the other videos we put on YouTube, and if you're interested in our little collection, please visit www.vaxbarn.com. Dot com. Thanks for watching.